Isaiah Pacheco, the 24 year old, 24 year old. What is, is he only in his second year, right? So he's second a little bit older year, for, yeah. uh, for a 24 year old who's in college for a while. RB 29 overall 73. That's a seventh rounder had surgery two weeks after the Super Bowl. Tom it was a shoulder. Make sure I get this one right. A shoulder, shoulder labrum tear. Correct. That's correct. And a, uh, hand fracture. Damn. I almost had it. All right. Well, I mean, at least it's upper body stuff and, and my very, uh, non-medical opinion. I don't think that's as extreme, but I'll let you talk about it, Tom. For, but also for a guy that runs harder than anyone in the league, I feel like the injuries could have been worse. What are your thoughts, Tom? Yeah, really no reason for concern here. The labrum repairs, they do super well. Same with the hand surgeries. Uh, and both of these are upper extremity, so it's not going to impact his running, his cuttings, his lower extremity mechanics in any way. There's really not much cause for concern right now. I don't think that we need to factor in this injury whatsoever when considering drafting or not drafting him. Great to hear. If you're not concerned, I'm not concerned. Again, only in his second year. And obviously, an amazing, spectacular offensive ecosystem with the Chiefs. I mean, not even a big guy, but physically tough as hell. Violent runner. He's a so Listen, Pacheco in the seventh round a pretty solid early down back and he's going to get some goal line touches. We know that Andy Reed and this offense like to come up with crazy stuff. It's not just going to be the I formation. Here you go, Pacheco, but he will get some of that on the goal line really came on last year as well in the second half. Here's the thing with Pacheco. And this is why I think he is going later. Didn't have many huge games from weeks 11 on. This is when he really, really started to pick it up, uh, really started to get a good workload. These were his finishes from week 11 on half point PPR. 10.7, 15.1, 15 15.2, 10.8, 8.2, 9.5, 11.9, and 12.4. It's a good RB2 flex that you're getting this late with potential upside for more. What do you think, Tom? I, I think he's an awesome back to target if you're going with the hero RB approach where you pick a running back in the first or second round and then no running backs until like round seven. I think he's a great one. I've done that multiple times in mock drafts. Um, I've got no issues with him being my RB too. Yeah, solid. I mean, just we have to put the concerns out there, but also anybody that you're going to get in this part of the draft, there is going to be concerns with. That's why they're going at this point. Doesn't catch the ball too much, uh, you know, to really beat his ADP. I mentioned this before. I think he does need to excel in the goal line. I think he does need to find pay dirt a bunch of times. Depth chart behind him. McKinnon's going to be the cast pa- uh, pass catcher. There's actually been whispers. This is a, time, a talk for another time that CEH might not even make the uh, the 53 man roster, which is crazy to think about. But Pacheco's the guy. You know, fifth round, sixth round. I think you're reaching. Seventh round, I'd be pretty comfortable there with Isaiah Pacheco. Last but not least. Close to home, a 28-year-old man who just signed with the New York Jets. Crazy enough. We knew it was coming. We didn't know where he was going. But Dalvin Cook signs with the Jets. He's going right now. And this is probably going to be so volatile throughout the next couple of weeks. Going right now is RB30, overall 74. That's, again, a seventh rounder. Tom, it's a shoulder dislocation most recently, right? Is that what we're concerned with here? Same surgery Pacheco had for his shoulder. So Dalvin was dealing with recurring dislocations over the past several seasons. And you try to rehab it a lot of times. And if you're not an NFL player, that's probably fine. I, I dislocated my shoulder and I rehab and it's totally fine. But I don't get hit by people 300 pounds every day. <laughs> <laughs> so he really needed the surgery. Um, and the surgery, like we said with Pacheco, does really, really well. It's a labrum repair surgery. And I, it's super strong. I'm not concerned about that popping out again unless he gets hit in a way that would have dislocated it anyway, even if he had no history of dislocations. So Dalvin Cook's really, really interesting because obviously we'll talk about Brees Hall on the next episode. But um he's coming back from an ACL himself. So, and the jets are clearly making a run for a super bowl. And I, I don't necessarily know that this says that they don't like where Brees Hall's at. I think it's just them knowing that Brees Hall is coming off an ACL and that what we just talked about with the history of running backs coming off of ACL in the first year, it's not great. So they want to add another really, really, really good piece to their backfield that can, do a couple things. One, if Reese Hall does not play well at all, that's fine. They've got it, still got a star running back in Dalvin Cook. 
or two, it's going to allow them to ease Brees Hall back into the the lineup um, rather than putting too much volume on him up front. But to answer your question from an injury standpoint with the surgery that Dalvin just had, he's good to go. I mean, he's not he's not cleared yet, obviously, but he's going to be cleared very soon, and I'm not concerned of setbacks. I think that's really well said. If I'm a Jets fan, I'm excited, and I really like the signing because it's an insurance policy for Brees Hall. You could work him back in slowly, like you said. We know Brees Hall's coming off a major injury. From a fantasy perspective, I want nothing to do with Cook at all. I mean, there, I think by himself, right, standalone value, I don't think there's really much there. Dead last last year, Tom, in rushing EPA, a big downfall in efficiency, explosiveness. Still has to learn the Jets offense. I don't even think he's practicing yet. Maybe later in the year, he'll pick it up. Brees Hall is just so good. I mean, I think for me, from a fantasy perspective, I think the only way I would want Dalvin is if I got Brees Hall. I would take it as my personal insurance policy, but I don't think Dalvin has much standalone value, especially going in the, in the seventh round there. And before we end here, Tom, uh, Adam Schefter actually just tweeted an article, another red flag. I mean, I hope everything's okay, but Jonathan Taylor, again, stepping away from practice for personal matter, or he's excused for personal matter. So just more stuff coming up right there. It could be contractual. I mean, there's just so many things right there. So just stick that back there. But Tom, hope you have a lovely night. Great job. Thanks for your, uh, thanks for letting us pick your brain as always. Always a pleasure, Joe. Sure is. And and for the listeners out there, we thank you dearly for tuning in. Drop us a like, give us a five-star rating, share with a friend, family member, uh, you know, maybe not your league members if you want to win your league, but it goes a long way for us. We really appreciate it. We are the Fantasy Injury Team, and we'll see you next time.